All right, today we're going to be talking about um, more beam topics. We're kind of in the, the part of the, le of the lectures now where we're just going to be covering a lot of different kind of a collection of approaches to analyzing the stress-strain behavior of beams. Today in particular, we're going to talk about doubly symmetric beams with inclined loads, inclined loads. Okay, and so what I mean by that is we have a beam cross-section, let's say. We have a beam, and here's the centroid. And let's say we have a load now, right, that looks something like this, okay, except it's, right, it's at some angle, gamma. Let's just not use gamma, let's use like that. Okay. So the condition here, we have all the same conditions as we normally have for beam bending, and that we have to require that the load, the load's incline, but it acts through the centroid. If it didn't do that, we'd have some torsional behavior that we don't have the tools to deal with. So what this means is if it acts for the centroid, we can decompose this load into basically a load um, that acts, uh, you know, you could decompose this load into components, one component like this and one component like that, which means this, this beam actually bends, you know, it's going to bend in the, let's see, this is, X, Z, Y, it's going to bend in the X, Y plane and, right, which would be the normal, the X, Y bending, but it's also going to bend in the X, Z plane. Okay, and so the way that we handle this is, this is just like two separate beam bending problems. It, it bends in the xy plane, that's what we've been doing all along, but now it also bends in the xz plane, but that's just a different perspective of the same problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to compute the stress coming from the load in, that's causing the bending in the xy plane, and then we're also going to compute the stress that's coming from the xz plane, and then we're going to superimpose them. Okay, so that's, that's where we're headed. Okay, so obviously the first thing that you're going to need to do in order to compute um, the, um, the stresses is you're going to have to do bending diagrams, bending diagrams for both components of load. So there's two bending diagrams, you're going to get two different moments. Okay, you're going to get a moment that acts around the Z direction, around the Z axis, and you're going to get a moment that acts around the Y axis. Okay, so if we take a look at that cross section, we have a cross section now. After doing statics, you're going to develop two bending moment diagrams. One of them is going to give you that moment, this is the one that you're used to, m sub z, but now you see you have a loading also that's acting in this perpendicular plane, you're going to get a moment about the y-axis. Okay, and the sign convention here is just the right-hand rule, so this would be this arrow would be considered a positive moment because it's acting in the direct in the positive direction of the y-axis. M sub z would be considered positive because it's acting in the positive direction of the z-axis. Okay, so if we looked at a point here, let's call this point A. Okay, that's a distance z away from the y-axis and a distance y from the z-axis. And so you can see that the moment m sub z is creating compressive force 
So this moment, m sub z is creating a compressive force, and m sub y is creating a positive tensile force. So m sub z, the sign is negative. It's the opposite direction as the stress or force created by m sub y. Okay, and so if you superimpose them, you get that sigma x is equal to m sub y times z over i y plus, or excuse me, it's actually minus because it's the opposite direction. One's tensile, one's compressive. m sub z y over i sub z. Let's see. Okay, so that's it basically. That's the that's the important equation there. And I think the most important thing to realize is that you've decomposed this inclined loading into a loading that's now essentially creating bending in two different planes. And so you have two beam bending problems to solve. You solve each of them individually, one for the moment m sub z, one for the moment m sub y, and then you look to see what the signs are, whether it's creating a tensile or compressive force, and you just do superposition, which is right here. Okay. Another thing to think about on these problems is where, if you have an inclined load and you have multiple bending moments, where's the neutral axis? It's clear that the neutral axis is no longer like this. It's at some other angle. The neutral axis is going to be at some other angle that we'll call, let's call it beta. Okay, let me drag you the little piece of paper here. All right, so we're gonna have our cross section. Okay, and we've got Z, and then we've got our, our load, M sub Z, Y, load M sub Y. We're going to try and figure out the neutral axis, right? Because we've made sure that the lateral loading passes through the centroid, the neutral axis also will pass through the centroid, okay? And we want to figure out what is this angle beta. Okay, so the way that we're going to do that is just simply look at our equations. M sub y times z over i y minus mzy over iz, and we just need to find the location where that's equal to zero. Okay, so just rearranging, we can see that tangent of beta, um, again, if we look at some point, let's say z, oh, sorry, we don't want to look at a point up there, let me erase that. If we look at any point, say on, on the neutral axis, that's distance y, that's z. Okay, so we have this triangle here. We have this triangle. So tangent of beta, which is this angle right here, is going to be equal to um, y over z from the right triangle, okay, which then is equal to, just by rearranging this equation, myiz over mziy, that has to be equal to zero, okay, and then you can invert the tangent and you get beta, which is what we want. Okay, and this is important because you know that through this, all the points along this line, the normal stress will be zero, and it also allows you to see that these points that are furthest away from the line, right, is where the maximums will occur, the maximum normal and compressive stresses for loadings that's, that load inclined loadings. There's another topic that is assigned where you do bending of fully unsymmetric beams. It's a little more complicated than what we've learned in this lecture. I would, it's important that you at least read it and work through some of the problems, but I'm, I'd be more interested, I think, at this point for you to learn 
just really well this unsymmetric idea and you'll see that it's not a lot different than moving to fully unsymmetric beams which is really not very practical there really isn't you rarely do you encounter a case where you have a fully unsymmetric beam okay